The Herdsman and the Lost Bull A herdsman, tending his flock in the forest, lost a bull calf from the fold. After a long and fruitless search, he made a vow that, if he could only discover the thief who had stolen the calf, he would offer a lamb in sacrifice to Hermes, Pan, and the garden deities of the forest. Not long afterwards, as he ascended a small hillock, he saw at its foot a lion feeding on the calf. Terrified at the sight, he lifted his eyes and his hands to heaven, and said, Just now I vowed to offer a lamb to the garden deities of the forest if I could only find out who had robbed me. But now that I have discovered the thief, I would willingly add a full-grown bull to the calf I have lost, if I may only secure my own escape from him in safety. Okay, so let's check this out. So a herdsman, um, tending his flock in a forest, lost a bull calf from the fold, from from his group, of from from his flock, um, and. Uh, after a long fruitless search, fruitless meaning it was vain. It was it uh, didn't didn't end up in you know with his initial goal uh, uh, taking place or transpiring. So he didn't he didn't find the bull calf. Um, he made a vow. He made a promise that if he could only discover the thief, the thief who had stolen the calf. So he he's he's insistent that there was a thief who who snatched the calf up. Um, he would offer a lamb and sacrifice to Hermes, Pan, and the garden deities of the forest. Um, and, uh, you guys remember, like, Pan's labyrinth, you know, Hermes, I believe that Hermes was the, isn't Hermes the, the Nike swoosh? Um, pretty sure, pretty sure, uh, not positive, uh. Let's look it up. So let's check out Hermes. Hermes. Who is Hermes? Then he got a Greek religion. Oh, transitions and boundaries. I'm not sure if Hermes was uh if Hermes was the Nike. Hermes Hermes' son was Pan. Olympian Olympian god. Uh, we, he's a trickster out wits. I'm not sure. Maybe Nike. I think Nike was the actual uh God's name as far as Nike. In Greek, a lucky find is a Hermaean. And I might have known more about this back when I was learning, but it's nice to like you know re re read re relearn and 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 whatnot. Anyways, okay, I don't, I don't think so. I think it was, it was Nike. But anyways, all right. Not long afterwards, as he ascended, as he climbed up, right, ascend means going up, like a the top of the hill, descend, like um, is to go down, like stair step down, ascend, stair step up, or to to go up, a small hillock. He saw at its foot a lion feeding on the calf. Okay, so. There was a lion feeding on the calf. So is that is that the thief? Terrified at the sight, was was, was he talking about a, a person, another herds, another person like himself? He's he's a herdsman. We was talking about the thief, or was he talking about the lion? Well, he's seeing a lion feeding on the calf. Terrified at the sight, he lifted his eyes and his hands to heaven and said, "Just now I vowed to offer lamb to the garden deities of the forest." Right, the garden gods, gods and goddesses, the, 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 the deities. Uh, if I could only find out who had robbed me. So he's saying, who? So is that a person? Is it a lion? Those are the questions that I would be asking. I'm like, you know, well, how, is is it is it gonna is um is there gonna be clarity on on the on this this question? Like, was he talking about a person? Um, so if I could only find out who had robbed me. But now that I had discovered the thief, yes. So he's saying who? He's saying anybody. Any thief. A person, a, an animal, whoever it was. So, yes, the lion. He found out that it was a lion. Because the lion is now feeding on the calf. The calf's probably dead. He's feeding on it. Now that I've discovered the thief, I would willingly add a full-grown bull to the calf I have lost. If 
I may only secure my own escape from him in safety. My own escape. So he's saying, look, at first I offered all this stuff to save somebody else. To save, you know, someone that I'm responsible for. Like to save somebody else. But it goes back to like the, the maxim. A lot of these, like if you think about maxims or aphorisms, um, you know, they really, they really can resound true. This is sort of the maxim that you can't help others if you can't help yourself. Um, so he's saying, look, now that I've seen this, I've, you know, this lion, the, the, I've seen that this lion is the thief, I would willingly add a full-grown bull to the calf that I have lost. Like he literally is saying, I would give up this bull. Um, additionally, uh, so I would give up more. So at first he was protecting the calf, saying, hey, you know, if I found out who this thief is, I'll... But now that he's seeing that it's the lion that's like feeding up the calf, he's saying, I would willingly add a full-grown bull to the calf I, I have lost if I may only secure my own escape from him in safety. So this has to do... This makes me think of like certain phrases. So like when I'm learning and I'm trying to think of like um, how to remember this, the you know, the themes and the messages and the... The vocabulary, the the you know the vernacular, etc. You know, I'm thinking about um, I'm thinking about like common phrases. So when I'm taking notes, I would think like common phrases that I can relate to, like hooks, like memory hooks. So I'm thinking, um, you know, you can't help others if you can't help yourself. You have to help yourself first before you you're able to help others. Um, and then also it reminds me of that phrase like throwing you under throwing someone under the bus. You know, it's totally a trite phrase, especially in like the business world. Um, but it's throwing someone under the bus. It's um, it's basically like this might have been your buddy, but you quickly threw them under the bus because you know you guys caught some some drama, some some squalls, um, and so you just totally like quote unquote sold this this person out. Um, and that's kind of what this makes me think. It's like this herdsman's job is to tend his flock in the forest. He's supposed to, like, make sure that, you know, all these animals, you know, remain alive and, and healthy and, you know, and, like, well-fed and and and, and whatnot. Um, so he's he's running around trying to save, you know, he's, um, well, he, he's trying to discover the thief who still stole the calf because he's thinking he can get the calf back. But now that he realizes it's a lion that's been feeding at the site, that's the feeding at the site, feeding at the calf, um, feeding on the calf, uh, he's terrified. This herdsman is terrified at the sight, and now he's afraid for himself. So now he's saying, look, not only do I not necessarily care as much about the calf anymore, um, even though it's my job, my responsibility, um, but I would literally sacrifice not only the calf, but I'd sacrifice a full-grown bull um, if I may only secure my own escape from him in safety. The him is a little bit vague, um, uh, a little, a teeny, teeny bit, but I think based on the context clues, it's pretty obvious that him is the thief, the lion, right? Um, that's just the way that Aesop writes. Um, the, it's good though. One, yeah. So it, it's good though, you know, because these, these stories are so short and pithy that, you know, we can unpack them and there aren't that many characters in the, these stories. So you, it's, it's m much easier to understand, um, what each word, uh, you know, means. So I think it's good. These are good stories to like get practice on comprehension and being able to think like, how am I going to remember this? Cause it's kind of old style writing. Right. So, um, that's kind of what I took from it. And that's how I would take notes on it. You know, you can't help others if you can't help yourself. And sometimes, you know, even though you might have the greatest of intentions, um, William Blake had a line, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And this is a classic example. You know, he had good intentions. It's his job. You know, if he was in the working world, you know, he'd, he'd get paid for this. Like, you know, um, to, to, to make sure that, you know, to take care of this, this flock. But, you know, one, but now that he's in danger, you know, he doesn't care about the calf anymore. He's like, I got to take care of myself. I'm like, I would actually sacrifice... I would actually sacrifice now. First, he's trying to find out who 
who's the thief that took the calf and maybe and perhaps get the calf back from that thief. He's like, I'm willing to, I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, a lamb. You know, it's it's irony. It's like um it's it's ironic, right? It's it's sort of like dramatic irony. Um, you know, uh um where at first he was talking about sacrificing a lamb to discover the thief who stole the calf. But now that he's like terrified and he's you know, his own life is at risk, and this lion is like feeding on the calf that's presumably dead, um he's it's he's like forget the lamb that i was going to sacrifice like now this thief i'm not scared of the thief i'm terrified now i would f willingly add a full-grown bull to the calf that i have lost if i may only secure my own escape from him in safety so yeah this is truly a classic example of what william blake meant when he said the road to hell is paved with good intentions because even though this herdsman had good intentions with regards to his like day-to-day -day work tending a flock um just as, as uh, you know, as happens in life, you know, that just because he had good intentions doesn't mean that that's always what the outcome is, or it, it doesn't mean that, that that means anything as far as, you know, what actuality um, is in terms of a certain situation, etc. So he definitely had good intentions in terms of tending his flock, but when danger got really, really high, he's like, you know what, I'll throw, quote unquote, this calf under the bus, I'll even throw a full grown bull. And about that lamb, forget the lamb. I know who the thief was, is now, and I'm scared of this lion. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't take care of others unless you can take care of yourself. It's also the notion of danger, the notion of, like, things changing. Um, and, uh, you know, Aesop is interesting. He's very real, very, very raw um, in terms of, like, you know, human nature and just, you know, the nature of situations and how situations might like you know it's kind of like these movies like titanic like nobody knows if they would be this billy zane character in titanic or you know the dicaprio character you know you or the the guys that are playing the music um on the boat you know as the boats like 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 going down so that's you know so as far as memory like remembering this those are all like the phrases that i would i would write in my notes or my my note card or whatever on uh, you know there are some tools like Quizlet and all yeah there there's a bunch of online tools but just you know in terms of like actual tangible tools um, you know uh, but you know if I was to 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 to, to take notes uh, no, uh, no matter what the tool you know I definitely would use those phrases etc. The herdsman and the lost bull.